Yes, please. Sure. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of Visionary Talks by Governance Now. This is Kailash Nathadikari, Managing Director, Governance Now, and it is my extreme proud privilege today to welcome none other than Sri Ram Madhavji on our show. Ramji, bahut bahut swagat hai apka. Thank you. Ramji, my first question, my first question is, recently the Indian envoy to the United Nations asserted that Hindu phobia and violence against Sikh and Buddhist should also be recognized. How do you look at this? No, it is a very important and very timely statement coming out of our uh, Uh, our uh, uh, representative at the United Nations, uh, the way things are moving in in America in particular, but also in uh, the in the liberal West in general, they mm. are not only suicidal for those countries, for countries like America, but they are going to be very detrimental to the entire uh, entire world. Uh, you know their eff their efforts mm. to equate political ideologies mm. with terrorism mm. is one very sinister thing that is happening in the liberal uh, you know uh, at, uh, world today i mm. was at a conference recently in canada mm. you know the question put to the audience at that very very important prestigious conference was as to where will the next terror attack come from and the two examples they took was 911 and 61 you know what was 61 Six mm. one was January sixth incident at the Capitol Hill, uh, mm. where uh, some uh, you know uh, Trump supporters had agitated in a violent way. Now the effort to equate a political movement, although it was a violent thing which was not welcome in politics or in public life, but to equate it with uh, terror incidents like nine eleven is mm. actually trying to. Not not only distort the discourse, but also committing a big, big blunder with respect to terrorism. Now, the point that Mr. Ambassador Tirumuthi tried to make there is, mm. you see, you are trying to equate political movements, like, mm. you know, uh, nationalist movement, other movements, with terrorism. Now, you categorized some as terror, and you are equating political movements with that terror, whereas the real victims of terror, Mm. They are not given uh, that kind of, uh, you know, status as victims of terror. Mm. You know, for most of these great liberals in the West, terrorism ends with Pakistan. It's all some kind of a romantic uh, kind of thing for them. Or only that is terror which, uh, which you know, uh, attacks London, which attacks Paris, which attacks New York, not something that attacks Delhi, Ahmedabad, Calcutta. Mm. This kind of double standards is what Ambassador Tirmurthy tried to expose. It is time that he did it and it is most courageous of him for uh, coming forward and saying it openly to the UN. Absolutely. And also the fact that, you know, some, some parts of it have been mentioned in your uh, book, The Hindutva Paradigm, which was just recently launched. So, heartiest congratulations to you on that also, Ramji. My second Thank question you. to you is... Uh, you know, and this is a feeling within myself also. I'm I'm a Hindu and I'm and I'm proud to be a Hindu. And you know, Desh mein ek aisa mahol ban raha hai ki if if I say I'm a proud Hindu, mujhe ek alag drishti kon se dekha jata hai. Why is that so? Why can't a Hindu say that he is a proud Hindu? Uh, with us have changed in the country in a big way today. Hmm. आपने notice किया है राहुल गांधी जी भी very proudly आज claim कर रहे हैं कि वो हिंदू है ये अलग बात है वो कह रहे हैं कि मैं सच्चा हिंदू हूँ आरएसएस वाले टूटे हिंदू है no the discourse those days no gone were those days when you know people used to think that to call oneself Hindu hmm. is demeaning or fundamentalism and all that today hmm. Everybody wants to, you know, wear this Hindu Hinduness on their sleeves. Could you mm. have imagined that, uh, you know, a decade ago, uh, somebody like Shashut Tharoor would have 
written a book on Hinduism. He would have probably written a book on secularism. But mm. today, to claim that their Hinduism is better than probably the Hinduism of RSS is mm. a kind of a new new competition in India. We wholeheartedly welcome it. Let all of us recognize that we belong to a great cultural civilizational tradition called Hinduism. But the problem is mm. this whole race to prove oneself as a bigger Hindu. Like, you know, today Rahul Gandhi ji says that he is a better Hindu than probably, uh, you know, uh, uh, Yogi Adichinath ji. Mm-hmm. That is the funny part of it. That mm-hmm. is purely political Hinduism. Mm-hmm. One should feel really proud of this Hindu identity. And today that kind of realization apparently you feel all over the country. Today, large sections of the society feel proud of their cultural, civilizational heritage. So many books come out today. Uh, relating to these themes, you know, right. today Savarkar is getting so much space again. Uh, Patel is occupying so much space again. It all shows that this discourse in India has undergone a healthy change. Hindu identity has become mainstreamed in the country today, unlike 10 years ago, when the mainstream political discourse used to be centered around the ideas like secularism, etc. Not to say that secularism is bad. Hmm. Hinduism the core of it is much more secular than what secularism stood for uh, in the West and in all these decades. As you rightly said, you know, secularism is not bad. But if you use secularism for the purpose of pure politics, then it is fake secularism. You know, that has got busted. Absolutely. And like you say, you say, that 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 you say, which is right. And, and what is wrong in that? As I said, a Hindu should be proud of the fact that he is Hindu. Now, moving to my next question, you know, the opposition is now trying to separate. There's a political discourse. So the opposition is now trying to separate Hindu from Hindutva. How do you look at it? Oh, very silly. It's just political expediency, nothing else. Hindu, hmm. Hindutva, Sanatana, Indianness, Bharatiyata, all these things mean one and the same. I mean, mm-hmm. not only he himself uh, doing Ayodhya Darshan, he is now taking all these senior citizens of Delhi to Ayodhya Darshan. Very good. I am saying these are all good things that are happening now thanks to the changed atmosphere in the country. But... Isko ek political fayda ke liye is prakar ka distinction khada karne ka payas karna ya vyarth hoga. Hindutva, Hinduism ka ek bharatiya shabd hai. Savar karne pehle uska prayog kiya tha. RSS mein hum Hindu dharma bolte the. Hindu samaj bolte the. Hindutva as a word came into vogue after Savar kar popularized it. Fair enough. Hindutva, Hinduism do alag chiz nahi hai. Hinduism ka day-to-day life mein abhivyakti jo hota hai, manifestation jo hota hai, wo hindutva hai. It is hindu-ness. You can call it. Or you can call it hindu-dum. But those who try to create a rift between hindutva and hinduism, they are purely doing it well-versed in hinduism, nor do they know anything about hindutva. It is they who are create, trying to create this kind of a political uh, controversy. Otherwise, Hindutva and Hinduism are not so great. To Fair enough. Or call it Indian. Yes, call it, yes, fair enough. Means the essence means that you belong to a great uh, inheritance. You belong to a heritage. You own it up. You are whatever you call it Hindu. Hinduism, Absolutely. As you said that, you know, Hinduism is Bharatiyata. And if you try to put it in front of it, then it's wrong. Now, uh, do you believe that because as I said, you know, opposition was... Absolutely. For the purpose of the purpose. Now, my question is that as the opposition is using this for the purpose of Hindu versus Hindutva, do you think it will help them in uh, reaping some political benefits? Uh, 
<laughs> I don't know. I can sure people of the country have become very politically aware, very mature. I'm sure if somebody tries to exploit suddenly overnight, he will suddenly try to portray himself as Hindu and all that only for the sake of reaping some political benefits. Because elections UP me, my, I think that it will not be UP ki janata. At least on that count, on him. I think there's an internet uh, issue at. Sir, I think there was a internet issue. Uh... Are you able to hear me now? Uh, I, sir, you're on mute. Uh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit out of the internet. Uh... No, no, no worries. No worries. Okay. I'll move on to my uh, next but, question. Uh, if you want, we can resume it, whatever you say. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, I'll move on to my next question, sir. Uh, don't you believe that the Congress party, you know, prior to 2014 came across as an anti-majority party by playing too much on the appeasement plank? I mean, somewhere the majority of this country felt that, why are we being sidelined? Yes, for Congress party, for many decades, secularism meant appeasing the particular religious communities, the so-called minority communities, mm. and rejecting whatever the country's culture, civilization stood for. That was a very distorted pseudo meaning of secularism that they had uh, uh, followed, pursued, adopted for many decades. And, you know, once the larger Indian society started feeling proud about their civilizational cultural identity, namely Hindu identity, they could look through this, uh, you know, this duplicity of Congress and double standards of Congress. That's why Congress was rejected. That, you know, secularism should mean equal respect for all religions and equal treatment to all religions. Not like, you know, rejecting Hinduism as fundamentalism. Mm. And at the same time, pandering to minority sentiments in the, uh, I mean, in the hope of certain political benefits, that cannot be called secularism. That's and why also coming up with the term Hindu terror. Is that great, uh -huh, then yes, of course, of course, yeah. coining terms like Hindu terror, etc. But people realize that it's a dangerous game that Congress is playing. That's why Congress was uh, shown the door. So strongly that there is no hope of next so many uh, you know term years for them to come back, and not only show the door once but twice in fourteen and nineteen. Yes. Now, a witness in the Malagao blast case recently said that he was pressurized to frame Yogi Adityanath ji in the two thousand eight blast case with Uttar Pradesh elections around the corner. Do you believe that there is an attempt to defame him? Or the good work done by him? Oh, yes. You see, uh, Yogi Adityanath ji, to the surprise of many in the country, has given excellent governance to the state of Uttar Pradesh in the last five years. Many thought that he was uh, a sannyasi, a sant. Hmm. How could he be able to understand the nuances of governance, etc.? But look at the way he uh, handled the uh, state's issues like development, law and order, governance, in all these issues. He conducted himself in a much more you know, efficient way than his predecessors. If today... Hmm. He is uh, uh, hopefully likely to return to power. Some of the main factors would be his good governance. Mm. He is, of course, uh, uh, strong credentials with respect to uh, law and order and all that. In addition to that, 
his image as a strong hindutva leader is going to help him return to power again so the opposition out of desperation will try many dirty tricks in the book including mm. you know trying to drag him into certain controversies like that mm. but i am sure people of uttar pradesh have seen not only the strong hindutva credentials of yogi adityanath i mean if he, if they were to choose between who was a good hindu yogi adityanath or rahul gandhi i don't know who i mean you know i know we all know who they will choose but mm. i am saying not only on that count even even on the account of governance on the account of land order development and all those parameters i am sure people of uttar pradesh will not give any credence to these controversies and certainly go and take the right decision sure now you know bhartiya janata party's plan since 2014 was vikas ki vikas se hi ek samaj ka parivartan hoga why do you Why do you feel that the opposition is so scared of Vikas? Vikas से डर क्यों लगना चाहिए किसी को? वास्तव में हर बार, whenever there was an election, the the opposition has always tried to bring in other issues except Vikas. Even when they were in power, they had not they did not have much to showcase. So even at that time. they would talk about communalism secularism these that those as the issues now when a strong uh, you know uh, nationalist party is in power at the center in many of the states that are going to the po- uh, to polls now there also they are not talking about their governance for example take the case of up let them talk about uh, the five years of governance of yogi adityanath let him uh, ask the people whether land that has improved or not whether development has taken place or not do you know multinational companies are today coming to up for investments it's happening uh, i would say for the first time almost up only mm-hmm. used to get right from nehru's time only public sector investments government of india investments but today uh, even film industry is exploring the option of coming to up international investors coming forward why not the debate uh, focus on that because the opposition knows if you take up those issues yogi adityanath will uh, be uh, a winner in uh, flying colors so better to drag him into uh, hands down he will win so hmm. better to drag him into these kind of controversies i'm saying people of up for that matter people of the entire country have shown utmost political maturity today i'm sure they will uh, do the same thing in the coming elections also sure now ramji the parliament of india is a true depiction of a world class de- democracy you know and we consider parliament as our temple of democracy and uh, in 2014 when uh, honorable prime minister of india once he got elected and the first time he was entering the parliament unhone ek jaise hum ek mandir mein shamil hote samay ek charan sparsh karte hain wahan se unhone apne parliament ki yatra ko shuru kiya द ऑपोजिशन हल्ला यू नो जो विंटर सेशन हो चाहे कोई भी सेशन हो इट नेवर अलाउज टेम्पल ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी टू फंक्शन डू यू बिलीव दैट बाई डूइंग सो दे आर डिगिंग देर ओन ग्रेव नोर्स दे विल डेफिनेटली पीपल विल जज दम बेस्ड ऑन वॉट दे आर डूइंग इन दार्लियामेंट बट आई टेल यू समथिंग यू नो टूडे ऑपोजिशन पार्टी से दैट यू नो यू आर यूजिंग यूर रोड रोलर मेजोरिटी in the initial five decades four decades of independence congress used to be the most dominant party until nehru was alive their numbers in parliament never went below 75% do you know yes with that kind of majority in the parliament also we used to have excellent performance by the opposition then mm. used to have strong performing leaders in the opposition like atal bihari vajpayee or even for that matter many communist leaders like you know uh, jyotirbhai basu and all those people parliament mm. used to be a place for debates parliament used to be a place for constructive discussions in spite of 
smaller numbers opposition used to play you have heard a good opposition leader city when uh, you know people like uh, advani ji people like i mean those people were in the parliament in the opposition mm. With, uh, when uh, vajpay ji and all were in the opposition their numbers were small but their intervention even to this day people watch them again and again on youtube can you show me one intervention by the opposition leaders rahul gandhi ji sonia gandhi ji in the last 5 years that probably you want to revisit probably you want to watch again on youtube no all that they did in the last 5 7 years was only obstruction only walking into the well creating hallagulla there no constructive debate parliaments are there for constructive debate you have more than uh, enough numbers you have 40 50 members in the parliament uh, never uh, ever they engage in any con- to debate people are watching all this that's mm. the reason why they are giving their judgment from time to time through elections absolutely uh you know recently if i, I don't know whether you have seen or not seen a very f- famous publication carried out its cover story as adityanath's reign of terror and there's an entire detailed story why they say that yogi adityanath ji's uh, tenure is the reign of terror how do you react to it no same thing as you know today some western liberals try to coin these things like you know nationalist terror hindu terror etc now hindu terror was given long ago establishing establishing rule rule of law in this in a state like uttar pradesh hmm. if uh, uh, for that uh, if some people think that it's a reign of terror hmm you should wait for the people of uh, that state to you know take a, a final view on that Mm. it's a most uh, effectively governed state when it comes to law and order gundaism has ended women are walking free on the streets of uttar pradesh villages and towns they are feel they are feeling absolutely safe today because the gunda raj the raj of un, uh, anti social elements has ended for good in uttar pradesh now if that is called terror let the terror come to all corners of the country let anti socials anti nationals violent communist forces let them fear for their lives that is the kind of governance that is needed in the country which yogi adityanath introduced to people of uttar pradesh that is not terror that is good governance sure now my last question since we are on the platform of governance now ram ji according to you which are the five most important governance reforms that the government has undertaken in the past 7 years oh of course several many of them are there but, but uh, you know most importantly uh, de- uh, decentralization of governance mechanism is one major thing that this uh, government has attempted to do in that the way it used technology the way you know through the trinity called uh, janardhan aadhar and uh, uh, you know uh, mobile uh, technology how it tried to take benefits of the government to the last man directly i think is a very very important reform may i tell you in 1950s itself jawaharlal nehru had attempted distribution of government's largest to the ordinary people he tried that model but he could not succeed he openly admits this that i had this intention of benefiting people but i do not know how to do it whereas today prime minister modi has shown it through jam trinity a major reform where corruption has been completely eliminated secondly doing away with obsolete laws 1600 of them which majority of them were british vintage laws ब्रिटिश के जमाने से चल रहे थे डूइंग एवे विद दोस लॉस दस मेकिंग मेनी एस्पेक्ट लाइक डूइंग बिजनेस एटसेट्रा इन इंडिया ईसी इज ऑल्सो एन अदर मेजर रिफॉर्म दट प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज ब्रॉट अबाउट इन दिस कंट्री सिमिलरली यू नो हिज मेजर अटैक ऑन यू नो ब्लैक मनी एंड करप्शन इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट यू नो गवर्नेंस रिफॉर्म दट हीज ब्रॉट इन एंड ऑल्सो ऑन ऑन इन इन फॉरिन पॉलिसी the way he brought about uh, you know a major reform in terms of dehyphenation connecting with different countries today we import 
things from Iran. We import things from Russia. We also import things from Israel. We import things from America. You know, this kind of dehyphenated foreign policy approach where you are respected by many, every country is another major thing. The, the policy of hyphenation, he has ended for good. But mm. one thing I want to say here, I mean, in states like Kashmir, I tell you today, at the grassroots level, the Panchayat Raj reform was taken so much forward that even uh, at the Panchayat level, three Fs, funds, functions, and functionaries, all three have been today delegated to village panchayats in Kashmir. Do you know? It's not happening even in many progressive states in the rest of the country. Mm. Funds are going. But functions and functionaries are still under the control of the DMs. Whereas in Kashmir, Prime Minister's initiative has resulted in functions and functionaries also being delegated to lowest units. That is the true Panchayatra system that is even being set in motion in some states of the country. These are all great administrative governance reforms. Many such things can be talked about in the last five, six years. But I'd say only one thing here. Hmm. One major thing that Prime Minister really wanted to achieve was minimum government hmm. and maximum governance. Yes. I think more work needs to be done in that direction of reducing the role of central and state governments and delegating more and more powers to district panchayats, block panchayats, and village panchayats. Some work has started in that direction, but I think much more should happen in that direction also. Absolutely. With that, Ram Madhavji, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Visionary Talks by Governance Now. It was a complete pleasure. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for also joining us. Thank you so much. Jai Hind. Namaskar.